Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Joe. I appreciate it. Yes, my name is Bob McGuffey, and I stand before you here today as an unapologetic American, representative of other countless unapologetic Americans. With me here today are some solid Americans who lead grassroots citizens groups here in Connecticut. Our current national leadership's move to socialism, corporate bailouts, and government takeovers of private industry is against all the core beliefs that have been part of the very fabric of our society for all of our 233-year history as a nation. As many of you now know, two weeks ago, my small group, Right Principles, and me in particular, were picked out of thousands of similar such groups by very powerful people in both the media and the Democrat National Committee to be slanderously portrayed as a tool in the pay of a vast corporate conspiracy to manufacture town hall outrage at the president's health care plan. Weekly Standard writer Mary Catherine Hamm has thoroughly debunked this conspiracy theory in her recent article in the August 5th online edition of that publication. She has proven that there is no truth to this allegation whatsoever. Most disturbing of all is the fact that the most powerful political party on earth has taken this baseless lie and used it as a political attack ad against those who are simply tired of being taken for granted and being ignored. What does that say about such a party? Could it be that they actually believe this ridic ridiculous conspiracy theory? I am calling on the DNC to put up their evidence. If I am in the pay of or even connected with Freedom Works or the pharmaceutical industry or any other lobby, Prove it. If you can't, I demand, in the name of fairness and in the name of all those who feel endangered by this smear, that it be retracted immediately. I want to personally thank those people of journalistic integrity who took the time to actually investigate this fantasy and give me a fair shake. Unlike so many in the media who accepted it without proof, without evidence, and without the slightest bit of skepticism, there were those who maintained their journalistic credibility. I want to thank ABC's J Jake Tapper and CNN's Candy Crowley for their unbiased reports. I want to thank the many talk show hosts around the country who have stood with us and supported us, including Jim Weisfitch and Victoria Taft. I want to thank Mark Levin for his support and for his always vigorous defense of the cause of liberty. Most of all, I want to thank Mary Catherine Hamm of the Weekly Standard and Fox News who demolished this calumny and completely exposed it for the propagandist lie it is. And finally, I want to thank Rush Limbaugh for taking the time and telling the truth to his large audience. In the past couple of weeks, we have seen a few of those exercising their rights of free spe speech suffer from some acts of violence. We absolutely and unequivocally strongly condemn all such acts, no matter who commits them, at any time, in any place. We understand the thrust, the passion, and yes, even the anger felt by this movement. We understand the frustration that brought it together. We the people are tired of trying to seek redress from members of our government, as is our constitutional right, and we are having our complaints ignored. We the people are tired of complaining to a congressperson regarding their position on some issue, and then receiving a form letter from that congressperson thanking us for our support. We the people are tired of calling our congressperson's office and being directed to a voice mailbox that is too full to be answered and that will be dumped with the trash at the end of the day, ignored and unheard. We the people who go to town halls are not simply there to sit quietly with our hands folded while politicians dodge responsibility by picking on their favorites in the audience and giving us their standard stump speech. Town halls also exist for constituents to let politicians know what kind of job the voters think they are doing. We have a message for the politicians that engage in such evasive and dishonest, dishonest tactics. You work for us. We ask the questions, you answer them. I want to speak with other group organizers like the one standing here with me today, and more importantly to the tens of millions of people in the Tea Party movement and those who support their efforts. Are we frustrated, concerned, and even angry? Yes, and with good reason. Is that frustration growing? Yes, and it will continue to grow as long as people feel their representatives refuse to listen to them. Politicians need to be responsive to those who elect them rather than just who, those who finance them. But we will be heard. We must continue to use our voices and our voices only. We insist on getting straight answers and not double talk from House members who want us to support massive spending bills they haven't even read. 
We have never advocated the use of coarse or abusive language or the display of offensive imagery, and we urge those who attend town halls to follow this policy. And above all, we must never respond with violence, no matter how much the other side tries to provoke it. But we will be heard, because too many brave men and women have paid too high a price for our right to be heard, for it to be squelched. But just as I speak with our fellow grassroots movement and Tea Party members, I want also to speak to certain government officials whose use of reckless language and counterproductive actions we feel could facilitate violence. It is not helpful when a senior congressman disparages the town hall protesters by comparing us to one of the most vile anti-civil rights groups in history. It is not helpful when high government officials openly tell supporters, if you get hit, we will punch back twice as hard. It is not helpful when the White House posts a blog entry that asks Americans to refer their neighbor's emails to the White House server if their view varies with the Democrat health care plan. I ask you, who is pursuing the tactics that threaten free speech? In support of our efforts to affirm and reclaim our individual liberties, we call on our Connecticut legislature to resist the encroachment of the federal government in our state's affairs and to reclaim the rights of the states granted in the U.S. Constitution. Our movement robustly, but peacefully, raises its voice in the best American tradition of participatory democracy to seek redress from its own elected officials. However, when a government wants to force through policies that the people tell their representatives they don't want, that government is not supporting liberty, but flirting with tyranny. In conclusion, I would like to suggest to our supporters in the grassroots and Tea Party movement to not only continue to speak out peacefully and let your representatives know how you feel, but also to call, fax, email, and write your elected representatives and demand from them a public affirmation of our constitutional rights to voice our concerns without being disparaged. Their job is to represent us not reprimand us, and we will be heard. Thank you.